Squeaky Friends. This is Margaret. This is Colleen. And we're the Cousins Weird. Hello, friends. Hi, we're virtual because Colleen has COVID in her house still. <laughs> yep, and the weather's crappy, so even if it's not, we probably oh wouldn't be. <laughs> it's like two feet of snow at my house, and I know that officially because my husband and I shoveled our driveway today, <laughs> and I think I might die. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I can't do it. I literally mm. came inside the house and I took my clothes off and I laid on the bed. And I'm like, I hope I don't die. I might die. <laughs> <laughs> and you die naked. You took your clothes off. I know. I had underwear on, but <sighs> I had a shirt on, but I didn't have pants on. <laughs> Part of it was because I was hot and sweaty and my pants were wet. So, you know, yeah. I, hate I didn't that want to feeling. get to bed with wet pants. So, yeah, that was. That was not, I would say that was fun, but it really was not fun. I'm still, um, I'm still on my low sodium and no caffeine diet. <laughs> Hating life! <laughs> uh, in our group chat, you guys are talking about how um, my sister's like, well, I drink a pot of coffee a day. And I'm like, well, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't drink that much. I drink a, one thing of caffeine a day. I, I can't. Do, I say I don't drink much, but. My version of not much is two double shots of espresso a day. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Just, yeah, it's kind of a lot. Um, I don't drink a pot of coffee a day, but I drink a double shot of espresso, and then I drink another double shot of espresso. So now I'm down to one small double shot of decaf espresso, so I'm not as happy as I used to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not and laughing at you. It's just I know. the way you said it. It makes me sad. <laughs> I love you gotta that. laugh or you cry. I know. If I don't laugh, I'll cry. So I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel cleaned... like we were just we just saw it. We just saw each other. You know? We did. We just did our Taylor Trends and we're back at it again. This morning I cleaned out my pantry and I thought I did it once a year, like really cleaned it out. But apparently not, because there was things from 2018 in there. <laughs> that I had to throw oh, away. One thing that I like, I have a cupboard, a low cupboard that I keep my cans in. And it's funny because I live in the house that I grew up in, and it's the same cupboard my mom kept her cans in. So right. it's like the can, this is the can cupboard. And I was looking through stuff in there, and like in the way, but like way in the back. I'm like, what's this? And I'm like, oh, I don't remember buying this. It like, like expired <laughs> in like 2007. And I'm like, oh. Your mom probably had it in there. It probably was. I don't know. Like, it's just like, I think I, w I can't even donate this in good, in good faith because. No, like, that's not good. It's like botulism in there, probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah, I threw out like, so much stuff. I threw away so much stuff, just a waste. And then the pantry is still full. I'm like, how is this possible? How do I have so much? Why do I have so much stuff? I don't know. But the rest of it, at least I can eat. And we put it in there and then we forget it's in there. Yeah, it does. And I think a lot, sometimes, too, I get, like, baked, baked, like, you know, like, cake mix and things like that from work sometimes. Because we get too much stuff in the pantry. We'll, like, put it out for us to take. And I'll grab it. And it's near expiration anyway. And I grab it and throw it in my cabinet because it's free. But then I never touch it. So. Right. It's just stupid. I just have a bunch of crap. Really, my whole house is just a bunch of crap I don't need. So. I found uh, the last time I cleaned out, like when we were during quarantine, um, we have like a kitchen island that has cupboards. And then we have a little pantry that we keep the TV on in the kitchen. And the little kitchen island, it's kind of like keep cereal in there and kind of snack stuff. So it's like mm -hmm. stuff goes in and out of there all the time. Yeah. And then I was looking at I'm like, oh, I'm going to like take a bunch of stuff out of here and rearrange it and organize it. And um, I found a ton of shit in there. From when I worked at the mustard seed, and oh, wow. I haven't, and I haven't worked at the mustard seed in seven years, and it was a bunch of stuff that was like <laughs> free stuff, you know. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that needs to get, I need to get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have another like, cabinet with snack things in it that I have to go through and like organize it because it's a mess. But I was like, one thing at a time. The pantry was a big overhaul that took a lot, so I'm just, I'm done for the day. I'm, I'm like, it's time for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, like, in my refrigerator, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> Probably stuff that, like, we need a biohazard. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Sometimes that that those uh, little uh, storage containers don't get ever washed. They just go right in the garbage, as Griffin used to say. <laughs> the garbage. <laughs> I don't really need to keep this. Nah, I don't need it that badly. I'm not clean this out. I will throw this away. I don't, I can buy another one of these. Fine. <laughs> I know it's wasteful, but come on. <laughs> All right, so are we ready to get into my... I'm ready. All right, Colleen. This week, we are talking... It better not be about feet. <laughs> not really, although it's a mummy, and for some reason... In this Why is there always feet watched, stuff in yours? They constantly were kept showing pictures of this mummy's feet, and I'm just, like, laughing this whole time. And when I was looking up pictures for this episode, they kept had pictures of this mummy's feet kept popping <laughs> up. And, of course, I put them in there to send to you because... Of course. Of course, yes. Of but this course. is the D- they call her the diva mummy because oh. she was she was extra. Let me tell you, <laughs> if a mummy could be extra, she was. Let me tell you, her name was Sin Shui. She is Chinese. She lived during the Han Dynasty in the Changsha Kingdom in it's a Western Han Dynasty in ancient China. She was born. In 217 BC and died in 168 BC. So we're talking like more than 2,000 years ago. Wow. Was, yes. She was the Marquise. I can't ever do those stupid <laughs> words. Of Dai. The Lady of Dai. She's also called the Lady of Dai. Um, and she was found, well, her tomb was discovered. In um, 1968 in Hunan, China, um, they were, it was called this hill that she, her tomb was discovered in was called Ma Wang Dui, which is just fun to say, <laughs> Ma Wang Dui. And um, they were doing, um, there were workers there digging a uh, air raid shelter, because we're talking, this was China in the 70s. So we're talking, we're getting into like the height of communism right you know and they were digging an air raid shelter for a hospital in changsha and um the excavations for her tomb they discovered it in 1968 and the excavation started in 1972 and um they had over 1500 local high school students that assisted the archaeologists digging out this tomb Wow. Which is which is crazy. You know, like all these little high school kids over there working, which were because you know, <laughs> it's communism. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's put the children to work. Yes. What do they call like red dragons or something? Is what they called the young, the teenagers. Oh. Then I think that's what they were called, red dragons. I don't remember. I don't. Remember um. Either. But when they discovered her, like. She, they performed an autopsy on her, like, cause she was soft, like, mm. yeah, she was gooey, like, <laughs> just, like, yeah. And so, like, when I'm watching this documentary, like, I had to close my eyes, cause it was like kind of nauseating, cause it was Ew. really, it was really gross. <laughs> watching this, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this is no, I can't, it, no, no, because they're like pulling, they're like, oh, and they, they. They removed her ovaries. I'm like, yeah, there they were. Oh God, you know, it was all like it was so gross. Like, oh, you know, there they are. Like her, they like were showing like her limbs are flexible, and they're like bending her arms around Ew. and they're pushing her skin, and her her skin is still elastic and it has this faint yellow color that she had in life. They're like, she's so, it's like she's alive. I'm like, she does not look alive. She looks gross. <laughs> She doesn't look like a regular mummy, but she definitely does not look alive. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they, like, they estimated her to have weighed in life because she was really wrinkly. Her skin was very, like, kind of shriveled a little um, because she lost, like, a lot of her fat dissolved. But they right. think that she weighed over 70 kilos when she was alive, which is... Like, I meant to check to see how much that... I have no clue what that was. is. So, I'm going to do a quick a quick Google. Does that mean... Does that mean she was thin, or does that mean she was... That chunky? means she I was... I don't a, know. She was, a, she was a, one of our plump sisters, Colleen. Because mm. <laughs> I wouldn't have a clue. 
<laughs> by you I just know. saying that. Yeah, I know. I can't do like any conversions of any kind. So she weighed don't about, ever ask. She weighed about 150 pounds, but she was really small. Like we're, t- we're I was talking- say, you just said she was chunky, Mark. <laughs> yes, but she was probably not even five feet tall. Okay, well, I guess she was a little chunky, but still, I don't even. Oh, count she, that. they, I, yeah, she was. I'll, I'll explain. And she, they, they said she when she died, she was right around 50 years old. Um, there were over a thousand artifacts entombed with her, and two thirds of them were <laughs> connected with food and drink. Oh, she is a sister of mine, yes. isn't she? <laughs> yes, she's, she's fun. They there were thirty sealed bamboo baskets that had um, pears, plums, soybeans, locusts. These are all foods, mind you, that they ate oh. them. Locusts, Ew. and then they found some that had the bones of different uh, animals that they would have ate. Then pigs, okay. oxen, dogs. Sorry. Pheasants and like ten other different animals. There was like a bunch of different animals that they would have eaten. Like there was a whole swan carcass that they found. Wow. Um, and it's funny how the animals weren't preserved. They found preserved lotus, sliced lotus root in liquid. And they said that once that they discovered it, they tried to remove it from the liquid. It just was mush. Like oh, wow. Two thousand year old preserved lotus root, like in That's liquid, crazy. like pickled lotus root it's the same and being like my husband being of korean descent like i've had lotus root pickled and it's like just funny that that's something they still eat yeah like, thousand years later um they found plates that had her favorite dishes prepared with slips that had her favorite recipes on them so that in the afterlife to make something they would know how to prepare her favorite recipes. They found like statues of servants so that she would have servants with her in the afterlife. That, and they oh. sent the recipe so they would know how to make her favorite food. You know, that was nice. Yeah. And they found um, inscribed, like these recipes were like inscribed and placed in her grave along with all the ingredients to make all of these recipes for her. <laughs> like, the complete skeleton of a swan and sparrow's eggs and the sliced lotus root were all part of a specific recipe that she liked to eat. Oh, so they just, were just putting the carcasses of things in there for good No, luck. they actually probably had a whole swan. Oh. And this is just the remains of what? So like, a, a living swan was put in there? It was probably killed. Okay. That makes but, me feel a little bit better. Yeah, they probably like killed the swan and laid it in there so that it was so there. Like, for- just leaving a poor swan in there to starve to death is kind of mean. <laughs> and I'm glad that they put statues of servants instead of the actual servants. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going in there with her. <laughs> yeah, right. They found um, the largest set of lacquered dinnerware ever found. And there were like hundreds of pieces of this set. And um, there was a thing that said that uh, some of them were painted with phrases like, please eat. But it was just like little things like, Oh, that's nice. Like, Aww. you could tell this woman in life, she liked to party. She liked to have people come and eat and have lavish parties and lavish dinners. So she was, like, a happy person in life who like, ate and, and had she had a fun time. Like, she had all of her, like, wine casks were there with her. Like, like she, like, was ready. She was ready for the afterlife. And draped over her coffin was a silk banner um, showing her making her way through the afterlife. And it showed her with a cane on this banner. And I um, actually have a picture of it we're going to put up on the Instagram page and the Facebook page. But it's beautiful, this this banner that was like, I don't know if it was painted or embroidered, but it was like all of these depictions of what her afterlife would be. And it was a big party <laughs> with lots Sounds of fun food. to me. Yeah, lots of food. Sounds like my afterlife. Big right. party, lots of food. Um, yep. They found another, um, about in 1974, 